that I did have some attributes that were noticeable. To where so they I, invited yeah. you back. Correct. Yeah. And then I wasn't an NTR. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, <clears throat> so week one was good for you. Land Nav, you struggled a little bit. Let's talk about team week. How was that? Team week was easy, man. That's was like playing football. Bro. Dude, you might be the only one that's been <laughs> on here that says team week is easy. Not to the extent of yeah. like easy meaning like if everybody's sucking. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, like there you we, go. We in, yeah. this, we in this thing, and we're it goes back to Iraq when I said yeah. going from boy to men. Mm-hmm. If we in to suck together, man, let's just suck, dog. Let's get it. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. make it. Like no complaining. Let's, no, man. Yeah. Like let's get it. There was some complaining, moaning. Like when yeah. I first felt that down, pilot boy. <laughs> Like my spine was compressed. I'm like, yeah. what the f- they having this bad, man? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'm talking about like, and we were like, yeah, we're gonna walk like a click first before we take a rest. No, nah, bro. Now we're more like 200, maybe 150 <laughs> meters down the road. We're like, yo, we gotta put this thing down. Like, we need to adjust yeah. this weight or adjust our plan because yeah. this ain't working. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, minus down pilot, mm-hmm. um, I felt like everything else was manageable. Yeah. Um, you just had to embrace the suck. You had to embrace um, the soreness that you had and overcome that soreness. Mm-hmm. Um, even when your body said no, you had to say yes. Yeah. Um, and, and you felt it at the end of selection. Like, it was like you got hit by a train. Yeah. Um, my body started smelling like ammonia because I wasn't eating enough. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like, there's so many other, like, small skills that you need to have or mm-hmm. knowledge you need to have that I didn't have. I didn't know to, you know... Eat as you stuff, move. As yeah. I'm moving, yeah. I'm waiting until they tell me to eat and or have enough break to eat. Mm-hmm. And I was already past the power curve. I already yeah. burnt too many calories. Mm-hmm. Um, as I'm drinking water, I'm smelling ammonia. Like I felt sickly yeah. um, the first time because I was the fish out of water. I didn't understand what I needed to do mm-hmm. to be successful. And it's more than just going there and shape. Yeah. No, no, no. It takes a lot more. Because everyone goes there and shape to an extent. Right. But by the time you get to week three, team yeah. week. That shit doesn't matter. Yeah, it like, doesn't even matter. On Everybody's the, on the, and that's what yeah. they do, and that's why I tell people, like, they they take away all those gummies and chewies mm-hmm. that, that you would use on the civilian side to maintain your fitness. Yeah. They want to see what happens when you don't have it. Yeah. Like, I told people, I grade you not by when things are going good, but when they're going wrong. Yes. Because now I kind of see your true character and yeah. how you're dealing with mm-hmm. obstacles and adversity. Yeah. Um, and so that's what selection is made for, because... Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to go there and shape, and if you're getting four square meals mm-hmm. a day, anybody can perform at top level. Yeah. But what if I give you two meals a day? Yeah. Or maybe I give you one. And, and then take some sleep away. And, t- and there you go. And then now now I'm dealing with the real yeah. internal piece of you. Yeah. And, and so I they're tell stripping you, you of, yeah. of all, your, <laughs> all your outside stuff. Yeah, and I tell you what, man, like you go there in some of the, like, um, I want to say two days ago, I had a guy go out to selection and he just got back. He was a roadkill um, at selection. And the way I have the discord set up and the uh, uh, prep courses that I run, like whenever dudes get back, like I have them do a quick AR, like, hey, um, like personal accountability, what'd you fuck up? Uh Right. And how can that be used to help the next man? So he broke it down and he was like, man, like the amount of dudes that quit um, during the first week and the second week. (laughs) Was ridiculous, and they were like dudes that were in good shape. Yeah, good dude, dude that he saw and he compared himself to, and was like, right. "Holy fuck!" Like I'm not on these guys' level. Yeah, and then those are the guys that end up quitting because they didn't have uh, the right mindset or uh, all the right tools. Yeah, to, to or the right fight. tools. Yeah, because yeah. you got to have the right tools to fight yeah. with. Like uh, again, I'll go back to you could be in shape, mm-hmm. you could be a tough cookie, but yeah. if you are missing like those fine skills yeah. of Knowing when to eat, knowing how to take care of yourself, knowing yeah. your body, um, knowing when to drink, and, and forcing yourself to drink when it, even if you don't feel thirsty yeah. because you need to be ready for the next day, all that builds up to the model SF soldier that you're going to become mm-hmm. because you have to do a lot of preparation for yeah. these deployments. You have to yeah. do a lot of preparation for mission. Mm-hmm. Like you don't wait to the the day of to start prepping yeah. your equipment. Like you're going through your stuff, making sure you got fresh batteries, extra batteries, mm-hmm. like. That goes into the same thing with your body. Make yeah. sure you eat. Make sure you drink. When they tell you to sleep, fucking sleep. Yeah. Don't be up, you know, thinking about mama and the yeah. next day. Like, close your eyes, Get shut sleep. down, decompress, and then be ready for the fight yeah. the next day. So, um, those fine skills I, I acquired when I went back the second time. Second time. And yeah. night and day. 
What's night it? and day. And that's why it's important um, for guys, if there is a prep course, man, there's nothing wrong for mm -hmm. preparing. Yeah. Because any mission you go on, guess what? You think they're just going to throw you on a mission say, hey, go hit that. And you're like, wait, no, where you are we going? Prep. No, yeah. you have to plan for that because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to plan and you got to prep yourself for these events in order to be successful. Yeah. And then leaning on, you know, channels like yours mm -hmm. to um, get that knowledge and those cookies to like, oh, yeah, man, I need to work on this. Mm -hmm. And you will see the difference of the people that didn't do that. Yeah. When you actually add selection. Right. Yeah. You'll see the difference. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that. <laughs> um, you are a 14 day non select. Yes. I was, because of course, uh, we all go there um, with the intention of getting selected. Yes. How was that feeling of making it all the way to the end uh -huh. and then finding out you're a 14 day non select? Uh, talk to me about that piece and also offer any advice you might have for anybody looking uh, at going to selection. So, um, when I got my weapon taken, I think it was either the second to last day if not the last day of team events which kind of sucked it was a kind of it was a blow mm -hmm. it was a gut blow because i pride myself of maintaining your weapon especially being infantry yeah. um so my pride was a little hurt on that but um i had heard other people had got their weapons taken. Yeah. like the guy was just going around snatching weapons and it, and it happens right yeah um but neither here or there it once we got to the end it was like 111 of us that mm -hmm. uh made it to the end and out of 111, 10 of us was a non-select. Yeah. And so I was pretty defeated. Um, I didn't know, you know, what my next move was. I was like, yo, I failed and, you know, 20 group is not going <laughs> to want me to come back or anything yeah. like that. And so I was going to, you know, see the Piper to see if I was going to be an NTR or I could come to next selection class. And so I remember sitting down with this captain, can't remember his name. And he's looking through my um, my file, and he's like, "Yo, like, oh, PT is good." He's like, "This is good. Peers look good." He's like, "I don't. Why did you not get selected?" <laughs> and I'm like, "You're looking at the paper, like you, you tell, tell me, me. Yeah. right?" But I'm like, and he's looking, and I'm like, "Well, you might want to keep flipping because." And this is the integrity and personal accountability. I said, mm -hmm. "You know, I lost my weapon um, the last week," and he flipped it. He's like. Wow, okay, I can see that. He was like, but was that your only time? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, well, there was guys that lost the weapon and they still got selected. So then I was like, I, I don't know. It's a hit or miss, man. Yeah. Like, it, it depends on um, who catches it, who values. Um, and how they write it up. And right? how they write it up. Yeah. But I did get into a little back and forth with the cavalry that took the weapon because mm -hmm. I was mad enough to go to them and say, hey, I think you got my weapon because I yeah. saw him looking to see who weapon he stole from the water buffalo mm -hmm. um, when I was filling up my canteen and he uh, it's like if I was you I would low crawl and I'm like for what yeah and I, I didn't mean it but it was it was yeah it was an instinct because I was an E6 mm -hmm. um, he didn't know that I just have the, the tapes on but I'm looking at him as E7 like yeah we're not equals but I'm not like a private you yeah. know and yeah. I, I had the wrong mentality so that little back and forth there, I think might have caused you. May yeah. have caused me not to get selected, and yeah. not that. And he knew he had took, and he took a lot of people weapons. Yeah. So that's why I think that guy said, like, you know, some cat they play those those fuck mm -hmm. games. They'll go and play ranger games and snatch your stuff. Yeah. Um, so he knew what time it was, but it was because of that interaction that I had. I felt like that was honestly the dagger yeah. in me not getting um, selected. And then coming back, that's when I met you guys and. Uh, uh, airborne school I'm like it is possible yeah. right um, my unit said you know you're going back um, so I went back the next time and at the end of selection so I don't go through everything mm -hmm. that happened um, that same cadre was like how many of you guys been to selection before so I'm in the back mm -hmm. and I'm like I'm not like hey me I was yeah. in selection no, I was like you know have my hand settled up he's like 313 you don't think I fucking remember you and I'm like, yo, this cat hadn't said anything to me the whole three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I was being watched. Yeah. <laughs> like, he remembered me, and I was like, yo, I'm not making that mistake again, yeah. like, ever. Like, mm -hmm. I had my thing on a 550 cord. Like, yeah. if I moved, that thing was dragging. Yeah. Because you know you couldn't have the slum, but yeah. there's ways to... To tie it to your body. Right, yet. right. Um, without getting in trouble, because you're still holding it in your hand. Mm -hmm. you're not, it's not slum, which was the rule. Yeah. Um, but it was funny when he called my, my number... 
I'm like, I took look at my friend, like, yo, bro, I don't think I'm getting selected. He's like, no, man, you crushed it, bro. You did. I'm like, yo, man, that dude doesn't like me. <laughs> He's got it out for me. <laughs> but the thing he said at the end of that statement, like, 313, you don't think I remember you. Why didn't you raise your hand? I said, I did. He's like, shut the fuck up, right? So, yeah. Um, he was like, you don't think I'm going to tell your, your team, blah, blah, blah. I'm, when he said that, I'm like, does that mean I'm selected or yeah. <laughs> did he mess yes. up and give it away? Yeah. But I still didn't know. I was like, yo, yeah. I like, I had, man, my heart was, yeah. like, in shambles because I was like, yo, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm getting selected. Like, yeah. that dude still remember me. Yeah. But me and him going back and forth, I'm like, why the fuck would I do that? Like, yeah. I just tired. Yeah. No sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, not it'll being, it'll or, bring out your true oh, demons. Yeah. And selection so, is meant to do that. Yeah. I think my rap days came out when, yeah. you know, I didn't yeah. care about rank. Like, if you yeah. talk to me crazy and I'm out here busting my ass, you'll have yeah. a problem. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry, but we can take this to the wood line. Yeah. Would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, it was the wrong attitude to have mm-hmm. looking back at it in hindsight. Yeah. But that was the reason why I feel like I really didn't get selected that yeah. time. And then fast forward, like, this guy was like, I remember you, motherfucker. Like <laughs> he was, he, he was waiting for you. To oh, he was waiting because, yeah. like, he didn't, even doing law PT, which is a thing where they yeah. make you roll and stuff yeah. like that. I threw up all over the place. By the yeah. way, man. <laughs> you know, that's a whole other story. But uh, I remember him just watching me, man. Yeah. Like I was like, "Yo, Lou, I wonder if he remembers." Because it was yeah. six months later. Yeah, bro, he remembered yeah. me. Yeah, and uh, he called my number out of a crowd of about a hundred dudes. Yeah, and I'm like, "Fuck." So how did that? <laughs> Because for most people, like, that's defeating within itself, knowing that somebody's looking at you, waiting for you to fuck up. How did you stay focused throughout that entire uh, I just, two I just, weeks? Yeah, I just remember what um, the cadre at 20th Group told me is like, yo, don't self-assess. Mm-hmm. Don't self-assess. And it's hard not to. Yeah. It's very difficult not to. But I just said, like, yo, they're either going to select me or not, but it's not going to be because I didn't give it my all. Yeah. Um, so I had to put myself in the psyche of like, I know they're watching me, but bro, I'm doing every, I, I'm a heart and soul person. I put yeah. heart and soul to whatever I do and people that are around me feel my energy. And, um, I had to trust God one. And then two, um, the fact that mentally I felt like I didn't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I was misunderstood, but I mean, I couldn't change what I couldn't change, but yeah. I, what I could change is keep pushing yeah. until they tell me like, no, you're NTR. Um, so when I got selected, man, I was, you couldn't tell me nothing. Like I was like, yes. And I think we actually almost yeah. started the course at the same yeah. time during that time. So, yeah. um, I was happy because I remember you guys like, yo, we started the course around July. I'm like, yo, yeah. like <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a selection in April. I, you know, I'm like, I'm doing a timeline. I'm yeah. like, yo, I want to see these guys again. And yeah. I did. I saw you guys. Well, actually Cody was in front of me because mm-hmm. he had went to SGT before me. So he yeah. was already there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's amazing. Like, man, I, I just stay focused, man. Yeah. You gotta be resilient, man. You have, a, have to have a yeah. no quit mentality. <laughs> cause I tell you what, man, cause <laughs> you're a bigger man than me. Cause I got done with selection and even while I was at selection, I was like, yo, if I don't get selected, I'm fucking done. Like I'm not coming back to this shit. You know what I mean? So the fact that you went through it twice and still maintain the, uh, mental, you know, focus to actually go all the way through it. Uh, says something else about yourself, man. Now, now, do you remember how many guys the second time around you started with and how many actually got so, picked up? So, almost a similar numbers, right? Starting off about 300 dudes. Mm-hmm. Um, and we finished with 101. <clears throat> and the reason why I remember that, because my, my good friend, he's a GB now too. He's a CW too. He was a, he went to the list route, then went warrant. Mm-hmm. Um, his number was 101. Mm-hmm. And so... <laughs> He had he came from the Marines. He had this huge mustache, bro. Yeah. And um Kadri got on him and cause I was trying to scoot him like, yo, yeah. I already got in trouble, like, bro, <laughs> shave the mustache. He's like, nah, fuck that, it's in regulation. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <You don't laughs> like, <laughs> so I remember Kadri, like they're walking through the formation. Yeah. And they look and they Hey, hey, come look at this guy's fucking mustache. <laughs> Cause it was thick. It was like a porn star style mustache, <laughs> but it was in red. It didn't drop yeah. below the lips and nothing yeah. like that. So the guy was like, "So you think you could come here and rock a stash? You see everybody else's face?" He said, "Roger that, Sergeant." He's like, "Are you going to shave it?" He said, "Negative, Sergeant. It's within regs." <laughs> <laughs> like, Are you uh, fucking stupid? I don't want to. I don't want to stand next to this guy. No. <laughs> so I'm like, "Oh my God, this dude. He's not going to get selected." Yeah. You know. And uh, he's like, okay. 
Okay, Kenneth, every day that we have a formation, you're going to come and have a porn star fucking name. <laughs> and I kid you not, every formation, is, he was like, I'm Cockzilla, the click killer. Um, <laughs> John Cop Van Damme, like, bro, he, <laughs> he played I, to it. He had personality. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I learned, like, yo, like, you could be comfortable who you yeah. are and, and still win their hearts and minds. Yeah. So, like, they used to get a kick. Like, <laughs> Four star post. You know, he's running up there and he's coming up with new. I'm like, dude, how it's like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just making up shit. And uh, that's amazing, man. Um, but that, those are the dudes you want on your team, man. Nah, like, they probably saw that and were like, yo, we want this dude on our team. So they called all those numbers out, yeah. and they called me before him. I was yeah. going three, and he's just standing there, and there's like <laughs> one on one, and it was a hundred and one dudes there, yeah. and they called him uh, uh, first or last because they, they thought he was special, man. Like, yeah. And I was like, wow, man, that was a group, good group of uh, cadre there. That's amazing. Um, they did a good job, but yeah, it was. It was nerve wracking yeah. for me because I was there for the second time. Yeah, the first time. <laughs> so how was that? You know, so you got selected. Um, how was that? You know, feeling right there. Did you feel like holy fuck? Like I can do the hardest shit on the planet. Like how was that yeah, freaking accomplishment? Being, especially being a guardsman and not being active duty and mm -hmm. always feeling like active duty has somewhat of a, a edge because they yep. do it every day. Um, it was a huge accomplishment for me. Yeah. Um, I took a lot of pride in it. Like, mm -hmm. I wore the SFAS shirt. Like, you can't yeah. tell me crap. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the sore feet shirt. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, it was a huge accomplishment, and it kind of catapulted me to the Q course. And you know, even still, the Q course is totally different from SFAS. Yeah. That's yeah. a whole nother. You might as well call it a selection process mm -hmm. because you're, you're always being, being assessed. Exactly. Right. So. Um, that was a whole nother dynamic that mm -hmm. I think that I was still a little underprepared for yeah. um, mentally wise because of the cultural differences and mm -hmm. not understanding active duty mentality, being in the, being a guardsman, mm -hmm. it was kind of difficult to um, blend in, yeah. um, especially being um, a guy of color and from where I'm from, I had a, a certain swag yeah. that didn't always gel with people around me, yeah. um, but I was always lending a hand to help anybody, yeah. but I was... I felt different. Yeah, I felt like I was a little out of place. Yeah, um, to say the less, but I didn't let that stop me from, you know, getting into their spaces and mm -hmm. introducing myself and mm -hmm. being a helpful hand when I could. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you go to selection, you earn the same right to be there as right. anyone else. And once you get that tab in that beret, it's like I've earned my right, right. to be there also. Now that I'm here, I got to perform right. Yeah. Um, so you go through the Q course. Uh, any advice for anybody wanting to go through the Q Corps, especially as an 18 Bravo? Um, yes, so 18 Bravos, um, I mean, if you're not infantry, then you definitely want to team up with somebody that knows stuff about weapons. Like, mm -hmm. And it's not that the Bravo course is, is hard, but you have to be, you got to have a tactful mind of how to maneuver, how to shoot, move, and communicate. Um, and not only that, but you also have to have a, have to have a systematic way of doing things. Yeah. Like, and that's where I felt like some of the mechanics, the guys that came from, mm -hmm. um, non-combat um, MOS's, they they were organized in how they like broke down a weapon yeah. and put the parts and I was like... It's a lot easier for them to be structured. Correct. Yeah. And in the infantry, you just slap the stuff apart, you slap yeah. it back together. You're not, <laughs> there's real, no real organization yeah. in it. But um, I start to notice that like you have to be very particular in how you do things and you mm -hmm. have to do things in a similar manner so that you don't mess something up. Yeah. So if anything, you, you got to um, start developing a systematic way of doing things. If you're checking mm -hmm. your ruck, if you're gonna check from back to front, front to back, do that with everything that you do. Yeah. Um, because that's gonna directly translate on when you get to the weapons course and you're breaking weapons down, you know, you may start from the front, obviously start with the clearing and stuff yeah. like that, but as you're breaking it down, have a systematic way of doing things and you can start doing that now just by packing your ruck or, you know, Dressing, how are you going to do it? Just mm -hmm. remember that there are steps that you have to take prior to um, and rearrange your handbook. Yeah. Like, that's going to be your Bible because you're supposed to be that tactician mm -hmm. that's supposed to in place yeah. of security and know everything and where the gun positions yeah. need to be at. Like, if you're not infantry, rearrange your handbook. I did it. Yeah. I was infantry and I had to read it to make sure I understood how to break contact, yeah. how to, what reactive contact what was, what a near ambush was versus a far ambush. Mm -hmm. um, like, read those things you you have time to prepare yourself for those 
Um, and that's pretty much it, man. It's yeah. not it's not that difficult, but yeah. if you don't have a systematic way of doing things, Bravo course could be a little overwhelming because yeah. you're learning a lot of stuff really fast, um, and you have to you having to perform. So if you don't have a systematic way of doing things, it compounds. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I, yeah. So you graduated, and now you are you got your tab, you got your beret. How was that day like for you? Um. It was different, man, um, because I had, right after Robin Sage, um, I got a, a Red Cross for her to go see. Uh, my dad was in the hospital. He was in <laughs> ICU. And I knew he was sick, but I didn't know he was that sick. And my mom kept saying, like, yo, you need to go see him before you go back up there. And that mm -hmm. was that December was the last time I actually saw him alive. And um, um, after Robin Sage, I got a Red Cross, flew home. Um, to Miami, he was at Kendall Hospital, and I'm constantly on the phone like, hey, is he still alive? Like, mm -hmm. like, yo, you need to get here now because I don't think he's gonna hold on much longer. Um, and I swear to you, <clears throat> as I pulled up, um, they were like, hey, my brother called me like, yo, what's up? He's like, he's gone, he's gone. I'm like, They're like, what do you mean he's gone? Like, yeah. and so like, in my mind, and I just came out of Robin Sage, so mm -hmm. like, Mentally, <laughs> yeah, you dealing with uh, scenarios that deal with life and death. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I dealt with it in a way that most people wouldn't. Like there was no tears shared. Yeah, it was just like focused. And in my mind, I'm praying. I'm like, God, just um, bring them back so I could at least say something say, to say them. Goodbye, yeah. Right. I I swear to you, I put this on everything I love. Right. I said that small prayer. They're in there doing CPR on my dad, and I'm standing there. My sister and them were about passing out, right? Yeah. Cause everybody's like going to stay out cool, this and that and the third. And um, I'm just asking God, I'm like, just, just bring him back so I could talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I saw the doctor stop. He's like, hey, everybody stop. And then boop, boop, his heartbeat came back. Oh, and I was shit. like, this is my time. So I told yeah. everybody to get out of the room. Um, and I, <sighs> neither here nor there, man, but I whispered in his ear and I said, hey, I got it from here. You yeah. know, you could go, you could rest in peace. And um, from that day forward, like, it was different. So when yeah. I went back to Bragg, um, I'm not even gonna name the cadre that said it to me, but he said, I don't care that you lost your father, but if you fail this PT test, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure you never come back here. Yeah. And um, that lit another fire in my ass. Like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, um, I took it personal, but I'm like, yo, you gotta be out of your fucking mind to tell yeah. me something like that. After, One, yeah. after having experiencing a death, and um, neither here or there, I took it as a motivational factor mm -hmm. to go out there and handle business. So I passed all the gates that I needed to pass. When I graduated, I just didn't, I didn't feel that joy. Yeah. Um, like I thought I would, but as time went by and I got over my father's death and this and that and the third. Um, I was able to function better and then I really saw what the worth was of being a, a GB. Yeah, but at that particular time it was yeah. it was a huge accomplishment, but like it was shadowed by other Yeah, it was you know. it was shadowed by the death of my, my father and yeah. uh yeah, that was a that was a tough time in my life and as soon as I got done with the course, yeah, I jumped six months later. They wanted me to go on the point right after mm -hmm. that and I was like, yo, I need to like get my, my life back in order. And I deployed like right after that six yeah. months later. Okay. Um, so I jumped right in the fire. I just didn't jump in the fire early. Gotcha. Um, but well, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that story, man. And yeah. if you're that cadre, <laughs> punk motherfucker, like you know where we're at. Um, anyways, yeah. um, <laughs> so you got done. You got your beret. Yep. You go over to uh, uh, your your unit. I think the biggest question that the audience have, and I've been trying to figure out myself, is what is the biggest difference between the active duty guys and the National Guard guys? Like, um, from your perspective, what's the biggest difference? Besides active duty and guard, right? Yeah. Um, the guard guys come with a different skill set. We just don't come with um, the MOS that we train for, mm -hmm. right? You got guys that contract with DIA to do advanced skills. Um, you got guys that may have their own business or welders or this. Mm -hmm firefighters, medics, police officers, um, I mean, from all walks, doctors that are NCOs, but they like being on the team. They may be the Charlie. Yeah. Um, I have one guy, he was 
he came from EOD and he's he's a medic. Like he, you <laughs> it's know, like it's different. just yeah. it's crazy on the different skill sets that you that you um, have on a team. And the the biggest difference I, I feel and unless you're deploying back to back deployments, mm -hmm. um, as civilians we're dealing with people all the time. Yeah. I think that's that's to me is the biggest difference is that we're we're dealing with um, civilians on a regular, so when we go on deployments, it's easy, hard. Yeah, it's easy. Now, is it easy or hard to to to, to shift, especially now? I feel like it's easy because mm -hmm. I can sit because you know I feel like I understand the market. Right? I got you. And I got and you. and you're really as a GB, you're marketing yourself and you're selling yourself of your capabilities. Mm -hmm. And as a civilian, you're constantly having to do that. Okay. Versus when you're on active duty, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you're training to be good at that particular job, yeah. like, but not necessarily maybe interfacing or interacting with um, the public on a regular. Like, my That's daily 100%. job is to yeah. be interact with people all the time yeah. and, and problem solve situations of people that's not built like me or mm -hmm. has the same mentality as me. So that allows me to learn how to navigate people a little bit yeah. better. I feel um, like, in a sense, that makes you like a better Green Beret. It does, Green Beret. and there's some active duty Green Berets that operate like that, but the ones mm -hmm. that don't really get that exposure to um, that type of life, they don't mm -hmm. really think outside the box of SF, right? Yeah. You know, we think that we're out of the box thinkers, but then no, no. when it comes down to it, you see how narrow your vision is yeah. on certain things, and I've seen it, not just in active duty, but guard guys as well that, mm -hmm. you know, can't see outside of the, the SF realm. They don't yeah. really have a, a job that exposes them to different uh, counterparts, whether it, like we've been a SWAT medic to MPI, mm -hmm. DEA, or you yeah. doing these uh, felony warrants or homicide warrants, yeah. and you having to work with different entities and talk to different people. It it broadens your capability and your mm -hmm. ability to um, translate whatever it is you're trying to communicate yeah. to them. So, okay, um, I think that's the biggest difference. And like I said, you got guys work with DIA, CIA. Mm -hmm. Like FBI, like one of the guys that was on my team, been with the FBI for twenty years. That's like, amazing. Like these are the guys that yeah. is on your team, so they're bringing a unique skill set. That if we have an issue that's foreign to the SF structure, you have access. You have access to the people, as opposed to on a regular team on active duty. All you have is that Bravo, that Echo, that Charlie. Right. Now being on the National Guard side, you have. You might have a fucking lawyer. You might have yeah. a doctor. That's you might have an FBI agent. All dudes that you as a team saw and manage. Right. And now you can, you know, not to right. say you're going to call in favors, but you can be like, yo, like. But that's exactly it. Yeah. Favors. Like, yeah. DOS. I had yeah. guys call the embassy. Yo, I got somebody yeah. working at the embassy there, man. I could talk to him. And, that's amazing. And it's yeah. like, like, <laughs> we get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. And that's how I was in Iraq, too. We just, because we're part military, part civilians, yeah. we were able to navigate it differently yeah. um, whenever we get placed in those those environments. Yeah. We just, you know, you may have the overweight guardsman mm -hmm. normal, but his ability to navigate is totally different from yeah. that duty mentality. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Um, before we go to the next segment, um, now you've been at this for 23 years total. Your, you've done the junior bra, junior Bravo gig, you've done the senior Bravo gig, and now you're a team sergeant. Oh, what is Larry's leadership philosophy? Like when it comes to you managing your team? Cause I know when I had my team, um, like I was brought up to understand that, hey, as the team sergeant, right? I am Mike Tyson. Like I am the heavyweight right. champion of that team room, right? Nothing happens without my say so. Right. But I also understood that as the team sergeant, the team took my personality, right? So if I was a dirt bag, my team was going to be a dirt bag. If I was a squared away dude, my team was going to be a squared away dude. Like what's your training or your leadership style when it comes to managing your special forces team? So, and, and I think we talked about this yeah. beforehand off camera, but, um, it's different in the guard. Yeah. You know, you're talking about how to uh, give purpose, direction, and motivation to guys that may own their own business, mm -hmm. maybe doctors, maybe lawyers. Um, the talk and lingo is different because um, the punishment is different. Like they know in 24 hours, I won't see you for another three months. Yeah. Right. Um, so team dynamics and team management is different. I, I feel like I'm a personality manager. 
Like I'm managing different personalities to see what their strong points are and mm -hmm. utilize them, even if it's outside of the realm of their MOS. Um, when I first came in, I was a junior Bravo, but I was a I promoted to seven pretty quick. So my senior was a six. Mm -hmm. I was a seven. Wow. But I had more combat experience mm -hmm. than him, and he did against him. But I I'm pretty sure I had been in more gunfights than he had. Yeah. Right. That wasn't here or there. I still respected the fact that. He was in the organization longer than I was, mm -hmm. and I had to respect that. Yeah, um, that was something that was instilled by um, the team sergeant I was under. Like there was no back talking. If there was, his minions were going to check you. Yeah, right. Um, and that's how it should be. Like yeah. you have your seniors, and that's their right. job. Yeah. And so, your guys are your echo. Like they are going to echo your direction, your purpose, mm -hmm. and things of that of that nature. And, and like you said, if you have you an S bag, your guys going to be an S bag. But what my guys saw for me is that I worked for them, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I it was different. You don't work for me, I work for you. Yeah. So whatever it is that you need me to go do as a team sergeant and go stand up for and pound on somebody's table, I will, so as long as you do your job. Yeah. yeah. Um, a wise guy told me there's this three things. He's like, um, do, you, do you trust me? Are you striving for excellence, right? Like, those things, are important to be a team member. If you're not striving for excellence, why are you here? Yeah. If you don't trust me, why are we even, why are you here? I agree. Right? That's, that's a good um, one. So I, I kind of adopted that philosophy of um, I'm going to give you everything I got. Like if we both put 50-50 in, we're not really giving our all, right? Mm -hmm. That's only 100. But if I give 100, you give 100. Now we have 200. Yeah. So I need you to give me 100 of your 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 work ethic, your um uh, dedication and motivation mm -hmm. to get the job done so yeah I was the powerhouse I had to stand up a couple of times to uh, things I didn't agree with yeah um, I think there was one instance where one of my guys and you mentioned it like nothing really you don't make decisions without the team daddy knowing yeah like that happened one time on, the, on this deployment and it was an innocent mistake because we empower guys to make decisions in the absence yeah. of orders right yeah that's what you want Unless it, it goes about giving against. away our yeah. ammo yeah. that you may not know may be allocated for something else. Something and else. Yeah. Um, I talked to a particular person that um, on the B team, and he asked me for ammo to ship to a different location. I'm like, that's cool. I don't mind helping out, but let's make sure uh, the company commander knows and mm -hmm. that he's saying that he wants us to do that because yeah. if something happened, I give away the ammo, and then we get remission to something yeah. else. Then now I'm screwing over my team. Yeah. Talk to the guy, I'm like, yo, keep me posted and let me know and I have no problem mm -hmm. doing it. So this guy was thinking he was slick. Went around me and went to my Charlie, which my Charlie is very helpful. Yeah. Right? Um and the Charlie's like, yo, it's no problem. Gave him the ammo. And I didn't know about it. Yeah. So I forget how I found out. Um uh I think I was in the AOB and somebody like, yeah, we just um, and they're like, all right, thanks for uh, giving such a special table. I said, what? I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, um, your Charlie came and said it was cool to give him. I'm yeah. like, my Charlie told you that? I'm like, hold on, time out. <laughs> time out. Uh, and so, uh, oh, I know it was It was in the group chat. Yeah. Did Charlie send out like, hey, I'm sending blah, blah, blah to yeah. this place? And I'm like. Who who authorized? Who that? Said he, could he was like, I did. I'm like, no, I mean like himself. He yeah. authorized. And I'm like, okay, last time I checked, you're not the team sergeant. So yeah. that should have came through me. Yeah. Bro, I couldn't I man, I was coming out my chew. I'm heading toward the team house. <laughs> hot where yeah. I'm like hot one oh five and he wasn't in there. I actually ran to yeah. the senior. He's like, Larry, I got it. <laughs> SF guys are slick, man. Like I'm dude, some of the shit that as a team song like I had to deal with some of it was borderline comical and some of it was like oh, man like that's why I love these dudes but god damn it <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? like, I'm, listen and and to be honest yeah. that dude is part he probably is the hardest worker on my team yeah. so I wasn't like totally mad but I wanted him to know like this yeah. is a process bro I would never yeah. disrespect you and come your round and take something from your two box yeah. and yeah. give it to somebody that's how I felt like you did me like yeah. you took something that I'm responsible for and not yeah. even me the Bravos are responsible yeah. for that you authorized yeah. to get sent somewhere and who who the hell did you clear it through yeah right yeah. so yeah, even the, of... cap, the captain was like oh Larry like everybody was <laughs> <laughs> it was like everybody was trying yeah. to like 
you know, calm me down yeah. to not um, snap. But yeah. bro, I I do not play that. <laughs> we don't play those games, man. And then I got I got that E6 in line. Yeah. Don't ever in your fucking life go to my guys yeah. and ask for something. And I told you to come to me. Yeah, so you, you went around, around me, and he gave you when he said he would give it to you. You should have said. Time out. Let me go talk to Larry. To Larry. Yeah. So now I'm not really blaming much. I'm blaming you because yeah. I told you. You should have known better. Right. Yeah. And he was just doing a good deed and you yeah. got him in trouble. So yeah. now he's looking like poo poo face. And I'm yeah. like, yo, sit down, man. I said, it's neither here nor there, man. It wasn't meant to come at you like that. I like mm -hmm. your initiative, but there are certain things that has to go through me. Yeah. I am the team sergeant. Yeah. Right. You knew here. You came from Ranger Back, squared away dude, got like quadruple canopy yeah. on his thing, right? Um, but those things have to come through me. The team song, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I, I control the day-to-day. -day. Like, yeah. you don't, you don't control the thing. <laughs> yeah, you control the, the logistics, right? Yeah. But, like, like that that needs to clear yeah. through. And you didn't even clear it through your senior, which yeah. the senior was mad, too. So yeah. I didn't have to do anything, which is yeah. good because... That's what you want. What, yeah. There was a reflection of me. They already yeah. knew, like, yeah. well, Larry's from the... Yeah. <laughs> Larry from the snap, so... Those are good. You do it, yeah. then I do it because, yeah. you know... Those are good problems to have, though, man. Like, I miss that part of being a team sergeant because yeah. by far, probably the best job that I've had in the military. It's just, but SF guys are going to do that type of stuff. Yeah, no, nah, man. Knowing I, that they know better. You know? Listen, <laughs> I got my PB Spanker uh, plenty of times at the Bravo, yeah. you know, doing the right thing, but it does, it's supposed to go through a process, man. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't bend the rules a little bit, then I don't yeah. know if you're a real grim gray. Like, exactly. Like, exactly. you walk the tight line, bro, you're not going to make it, boy. Yeah. You're going to see something like, yo, I ain't see that. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you go, because um, me being an active duty guy, right? right? So we're always in the mindset of, like, we eat, sleep, SF guy shit. Like, we're always ready to deploy. So how do you get your team ready? Like, you, you guys see each other every three months. If not a little bit longer, yeah. like how do you get a guy to snap into that mindset for six to eight month deployment, knowing that he's you know he can easily lose focus on how to be an SF guy or what he needs to do? Like how do you get those dudes ready to go down range and deploy and do work? So, <laughs> um, going back to what we talked about, yeah. the different skill sets. Um, I don't know any guy on the team that's like has a restaurant that's a cook, yeah. right? <laughs> so although they may not be operating in the SF realm, mm -hmm. they're doing something that's tactically related yeah. or combat related or medically related mm -hmm. or something similar to the MOS that they're um, assigned to do. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's a lot of stuff to dust off with SF guys because we don't have shoe houses that we could just yeah. go and train at because we're not seeing each other for months. But during our, um, our PMT and um, validation, we go to Sephalic every two years, you have to go do a Sephalic. And knowing when we go to Sephalic, there's probably a deployment like right after that. So yeah. you get a chance to shake, as you say, shake your shit out mm -hmm. um, at Sephalic, get back in the groove, make sure your kid is set up the proper way to be able to access certain things. Um, so as far as preparation, I think the guard does really good with one, send us to a Sephalic first, and then send us places like Griffin Group to, yeah. to uh, enhance our skills. Um, I think last year or the year before that, it was last year, we went to uh, um, Virginia and trained with the uh, um, DOS on uh, like a potential attack at the embassy. Yeah. Because of Benghazi, this guy had this idea that he wanted SF and DOS to kind of understand each other's capabilities mm -hmm. so that when something happened or a crisis happened, yeah. that they know what our capabilities are and how to employ us. Yeah. And so I thought that was an awesome training for mm -hmm. my team. Um, Obviously, this is the point where I didn't get a chance to, to go to the embassy, but we had the training, and it yeah. was a valuable skill to have. And had I known that my previous deployment would have been good, but we still did really good work with yeah. the embassy, work by and through them. But there is a lot of um, training that they provide to us, mm -hmm. and we could kind of cater. Like, if I think that we are lacking on um, low-profile um, tactics, then they will cater that training to that. Okay. And so amazing. you kind of get some exposure to it so you don't go yeah. in there totally blind to the like situation. Yeah. There'll be in different scenarios for KLEs and stuff yeah. like that. So you have to, it's a lot of money spent on mm -hmm. guardsmen to get them in the mindset of our active duty counterparts. And um, But once we hit the ground, I feel like we adjust pretty fast because we fast. already interact with people a lot. So That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, now, if you could, 
if you could have done anything differently as far as, uh, you know, this 23 year journey, would you have done anything differently? No, man. Um, you know, like there was a point where I questioned my, my path, like, am I crazy? Mm -hmm. Um, cause you, you know, my story going through yeah. the Q course, I, I had a lot of uh, things happen, unforeseen things happen and I still made it to the other end. It may have taken me a while, but I yeah. did. Um, but I used to pray a lot yeah. and ask God, like, why am I so focused on doing this? Like a normal guy, like I've talked to plenty of guys like, yo, Larry, going, stuff you went through, I would have quit a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And um, quitting was an option. I, and the reason probably why I'm so freaking stubborn, um, I did a lifeguard class when I was 15 and my mom, and we were doing a test. I was doing two day football you know. and I had to do my swim test. And the last part of the, the lifeguard test was to do a surface dive, mm -hmm. go down, grab the lady, bring her up, and bring it to the wall. Mm -hmm. So I'm swimming out to her, did my surface dive, I'm going down, I grab her, I'm starting to come up to the top, I catch a cramp in my calf, and I'm like, <laughs> 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 I was already running out of breath because yeah. I was I was winning, my body was taxed from um, uh, playing football. Uh, playing football. Yeah. And I caught a cramp, I'm like, she not a swim, she'll make you bad yes. <laughs> It wasn't a real scenario. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 15, I'm like, yeah. yo, man, like, fuck this, I'm like, yeah. I'm this. <laughs> So I remember this one, I'm like, mom, man, and my mom was sitting on the side of the pool. Yeah. Like, mom, like, I'm tired, like, mm -hmm. let's just go, like, I can do this another day. She's like, no, son, we're not leaving here until you do that. That's amazing. I'm like, fuck. So I'm like, okay, went down there again, Try to do it now. I'm cramping up in both legs. Mm -hmm. I can't hold it. I'm like, I can't even kick, so I'm trying to like save myself. So I'm coming yeah. back up. I'm like, yo, like, ma, like, yo, that's it. I'm done. This ain't for me. Like, I'm done. She's like, no, we go be here all night until you go down there and you do it. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, Larry, like, tough enough. By that time, my, her and my dad had separated. Yeah. Um, you know. And I was just, I was like, yo, I don't, I don't want to do this. This is something that you want me to do. And I was missing that why, mm -hmm. right? Because am I doing it for you or am I doing it for myself? And so I had to tell myself, I need to prove to myself that I can do this. Yeah. So the third attempt, I went down as usual. I caught a cramp again, like a bat one. But I said to myself, I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah. So I grabbed her and... When I say mind over body, and, and then I know you experience this in selection, you cramp up sometimes, but guess what? You got to keep running because maybe yeah. you didn't hydrate properly. Yeah. Bro, I tell you, I kicked through that that cramp, got her to the wall, and I was like, Holy yo, fuck. I could have did this all along. Like, yeah. But that, that little slight of pain and not being able to breathe or feel like you're underwater, you know, kind of overcame me. And I was like, yo, like, I'm coming back to the top. But yeah. when I said, by all costs, I'm doing this, I don't care if I'm mm -hmm. fucking drown. Right, it was when that switch hit, and yeah. so that mentality going through the course and going through everything I've been through started yeah. when I was fifteen, and and I thought I couldn't do something that I overcame, and and so it's always been a success story when I kept yeah. getting after it. That's amazing, man. I promise we're almost done. <laughs> um, so now let's go beyond the beret, right? Because again, like I'm sure the audience listening. It's thinking that holy shit, he went through all that selection, the Q course. This dude's a badass, but it it doesn't even end there. Like you're also a lieutenant with the fire department, right? Um, talk to me about that a little bit. So, you know, and it goes back to anything that I touch or do, I do it to the fullest. Um, yeah. I I quickly excelled um, in the fire department because. Um, I don't even know what to call it, but after coming back from Iraq, I just, I was happy to have fought for this country. I was happy to mm -hmm. help people and, 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 and just be a, a huge blessing to whoever was around me. Um, and so going, staying in the military and, and juggling the civilian job is difficult because sometimes you miss out on promotion opportunities, but I was trying to master two different jobs at the same time. Yeah. Um, but with the fire department, I love my community. So I worked in the hood, I was there for the shootings, the fires, this and that, like I, you have a sense of pride and joy yeah. 
for making a difference when something when you walk into somebody home they like thank god help has arrived yeah and you actually save somebody um is is a feeling that money can't buy so the things I do in life is not necessarily about money, but I need money to maintain my, my um, standard of living for my wife and my kids. But when it comes down to it, it's not it's not really a money thing. It's a, it's a joyous thing. Like, if you love what you do, it's not work. Because you don't feel like you're working, you're just doing something that you love. Yeah. Right? So um, going through that and then um, studying for the lieutenant test, that was a bear. Like, I had just came off my first SF deployment. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I need to promote. Like, I was a driver. I used to drive the engine. Nice. Um, I was already paramed- I went to paramedic school. And so I'm making good money as a driver. But I'm like, I want to be on that side. Yeah. Like, I'm on that side as a leader on the military side. But, you know, I'm telling the lieutenant what to do. And I'm like, I might as well just get paid for being a lieutenant. So, yeah. Um, I ended up taking the test. And I was number two on the list. Nice. Um, out of, like... 100 or 200 people or whatever and so I got promoted and um, even now coming off this point I want to sit for a captain exam I didn't do well in the last two because I didn't really have enough time to study because yeah. of doing the SWAT medic um, yeah. thing going to Leo school like mm-hmm. I become a, a, a law enforcement officer not yeah. full fledged but um, I still have a badge and I still have a resting power yeah. if, if it comes down to it but yeah. the mo- most important thing about that is that if I get into a shooting, it's not going to be like, oh, he's just a medic. No, yeah. he's also a law enforcement officer. Yeah. And he knows when or not, when to shoot and when not to shoot, mm-hmm. almost like an ROE. Yeah. Right. So that was, um, the fire department has been, that's like, that's my life. Right. That's and amazing. being a SWAT medic, <laughs> like, it's on a whole nother level. Yeah. Man. Like, I, I absolutely enjoy it because there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. And what we do. Minus, you know, you know, having a security perimeter where you kind of facing out like yeah. you would in, on a combat zone, but like we got breachers, mm-hmm. we got medics, um, not necessarily comms guy because we got good radio com- yeah. communication here in the states. Um, but as far as team dynamics and the spirit, it's the same. Like you Pretty can't be, you can't be that guy coming yeah. in there and and not earn your keep. Like they're real traditional. Like those guys washing the trucks every yeah. day. Like. Well, what, where do you find time to do all that, man? You got SF, National Guard, you have fire department, you have SWAT medic, you have the law enforcement side of it. You got your kids at home, you got your wife, you got businesses. Where do you find time to do all this stuff? I, don't, I, I get it from my mom. Yeah. She, she, she's like, you remember living in yeah. like Amon? Yeah. You got 15 jobs. Where you live, you only have two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, like... She always stayed busy, like, and um, I think I kind of picked up some of those traits. But honestly, all my success goes because of my wife. Yeah. Like, she she's a stay home mom. She take care of the kids. She takes yeah. care of the day to day that allows me to do what I'm doing. And yeah. and you know they say um, a man's success is probably you know from the benefit of having a good wife mm-hmm. and and the communication. That was difficult at times, yeah. like especially going back back doing different things. She's like, yeah. why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, it's gonna make us more money. Yeah. Like, nah. and she's like, bullshit. You yeah. just want to go play with guns and, yeah. and do stuff. Like, when when is it going to end? I'm like, yeah. listen, when I do this swap thing and become that, I said that's the only thing that I really want to do. Like, yeah. I really want to venture into that because I think it's needed, um, especially with active shooters and, yeah. and having a medic on scene. Yeah. Um, when you're doing these high risk warrants, especially after those FBI mm-hmm. agents got killed down mm-hmm. in the Miami area, um, that really catapulted like, hey, we need to get yeah. medics um, next to these guys because you don't have time to wait for the rescue down the street mm-hmm. or try to drag that person all the way down the street to yeah. safety or to get some type of medical aid. Mm-hmm. So um, being with those guys and knowing what it's like to be in gunfights and a lot of those guys been shot up before yeah um and uh, been on a couple of shootings with them but like the professionalism that those guys have is a lot similar to uh the sf realm um they're professionals at their job they take pride in their job yeah. and so that's just another it was easy for me to want to do that yeah. and do it yeah it took time away from family it yeah did. how yeah. was that training though was it um because i remember uh, you and I had a conversation about, you know, some of the swim requirements and just some of the overall, like, 
yeah. studying that you have to do to be able to, you know, pass that exam and become a SWAT medic? Like, how was that training itself? The training was three weeks. It was almost like the SFAS. Yeah. Um, you had your PT test, you had your phone test where you had to tread water for 15 minutes with your hands out of the water, which we don't do yeah. for selection. Like, I thought the swim test was a lot tougher than mm -hmm. um, <laughs> selection, but what they didn't know was I used to be a lifeguard. So yeah. here I am. <laughs> <laughs> they looked at me like, who is this back here? Like, where did you learn how to swim? Yeah, right. because the uh, the uh, misconception is the that... The policy is that we can't swim. Dude, I, <laughs> of course, again, I have a video that's coming out tonight, and it's... Because when excuses start flying around, like, I get fired up, right? right? Because there's no such thing as a, I can't swim jeans, right? Because right. you were a lifeguard at 15. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it all comes down to priorities. Right. Like, I want to go to Special Forces Selection, and I know there's a swim test there. So guess what, man? I get your ass in the pool and swim. Right, right. Yeah, and I remember waking up with you when you were in town, <laughs> yeah. and you and I were in the pool swimming. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. It's like, hey, I want to do this, so I'm going to go do it, right? Right. Um, so, it, again, it's, it's, it's just one of those misconceptions that I think flows around the community. No, it does. <laughs> and we have adopted it to where it's now become, it's now facts, right? Because right. we've allowed it to win. Right. And I'm like, dude, you got to break that cycle. Like, don't let that define you, right? Yeah, you, and you can't, man. And there's, there's help. Even like, you know, being a firefighter or being a SWAT medic, yeah. there's guys that... Unfortunately, a lot of black dudes, because the focus, going back to our previous discussion about football, yeah. track, basketball, yeah. swimming is nowhere in there, No, right? No. You got a lot of community pools within, in the hood, but they're three feet, four feet. Yeah. Well, you know, if I'm six feet, I ain't swimming. I'm just yeah. standing up in the water. Yeah. So there's no real, real incentive to learn how to swim yeah. until you get into the realm of government yeah. and any, you know, um, civil service, police or fire, you got to do a swim test. Yeah. And so a lot of that weaves a lot of us out because we're not privy to or our focus isn't on yeah. um, learning a different skill set like yeah. swimming, like that's important, right? See, um, I just look at it as just basic survival, man. Like 71% of this world is made out of water. And as a father, <laughs> as a brother, like, I, dude, I'm so scared of, you know, my kid falling in the pool and yeah. I'm... Or in a in a lake or in the ocean, and yeah. I'm one of those black dudes that can't no. go right. through that. Right, is, right. And I'm like, right. if if anything, let that be a motivating a, a motivating factor for you know the audience. Like, dude, yeah. just just you're not too old to learn how to do it. You know, just go do it. If not yeah. for yourself, but for your kids that might one day. And don't ever say that'll never happen to me because this is life. No, Murphy's lurking everywhere. You know, I and mean, you can get in a car wreck and kid flies into the lake or the ocean. Now, what are you going to do? You're just going to no. stand behind and watch your kid drown? No. Dude, those are the type of scenarios that has to go through your mind and, you know, make you do those type of stuff. And speaking of, I have two friends, close yeah. friends. Um, my Haitian uh, friend that works for BSO, yeah. his child slipped through the um, glass door and drowned. Like, they thought that there was with Nana in the yeah. other room and kid was floating in, in the pool, that's right? Horrible. That yeah. That is, you know... That's and, reality. And, and, and that's reality. And the thing about it is that... So I taught swim lessons. You can start kids as, as low as, uh, you know, let's say 11 months or 10 months. Like, mm -hmm. just teaching them how to, like, blow bubbles or yeah. hold a breath or be comfortable in the water or, or make it to the wall. Like, you can start introducing and getting them, as we say, um, water acclimated um to the pool and water so they're not yeah. freaking out and and then they swallow yeah. that water because their lungs are so small yeah. and then instantly they're, they're done it's hard yeah. to bring a kid back once they're gone um so my sister started a program where she uh has a grant um for swim lessons for you know uh for poverty people that can't afford it mm -hmm. and she offers free swim lessons during the summer yeah um in miami so like and when on my spare time, I actually volunteered to go and oh, work at that, yeah. man. Like, you're yeah, and Florida, and Florida yeah. surrounded, but you'll yeah. be amazed, man. Like, football is a thing. Again, yeah. like, you got kids that's playing football year round. They're not yeah. going to the swimming pool learning how to swim because they don't see that as their exit yeah. to success. That's um, so, yeah. that's just a hard fact that we got to face, but it's slowly changing because um, that's why you have officer friendlies out there trying to talk to people and they have these 
explore programs mm -hmm. um, to kind of introduce um, kids early on yeah. to what is expected um, so they're not walking into it blindly yeah. and, and having to play catch up. So. That's amazing, man. But um, again, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, so before we close it out, um, so I had the audience submit a variety of questions and I was just going to pick five questions from okay. that list cool. uh, for us to go over before we close this out, man. Because again, a lot of National Guard questions, some of which I can't really, you know, answer. Uh, so I just wanted to get you on here to see if you could answer it for me. All right, guys, like I mentioned, um, I had you guys submit some questions to the community section. All right, I'm going to choose five of these questions and I'm going to ask Larry and uh, hopefully I can get you guys some answers. All right. Um, so starting off, guys, I have a question here um, from... I'm not even going to try to pronounce this uh, handle, right? Uh, question is, I'm a current enlisted with the Navy Seabees reserve size. What are the challenges face uh, balancing your military and civilian career at the same time? Um, challenges, uh, family. Um, it does take away from family time. You have to understand that. You have to communicate that with your family, wife, or significant other. Um, and... They don't necessarily have to buy into everything, but they need to understand what it takes uh, to do what you're going to, what you're about to uh, endow yourself into. So you have to um, make sure that your family understands what's going on and, and what it's going to take. Mm -hmm. But also mentally, you need to understand what it's going to take, right? And if you don't know what it's going to take, reaching out like to guys like us on yeah. like particular questions or specific questions um, that you want to know. Um, to be able to transition, uh, I could give you a lot of examples and experience yeah. behind some of the shortfalls and pitfalls of mm -hmm. um, not being able to advance your civilian career and then having to focus on this because it does take a lot. Um, and having that understanding and knowing that something that's gonna have to take a back burner is very important to understand because if you're not willing to do that or you're gonna say, hey, I quit because I've been ignoring this too yeah. long, don't even, don't do it. Oh, don't do it, right? yeah, that, like, that makes sense. Um, here's another one. So approximately what percent of SF National Guard guys used to be active duty? Like, do you see a lot of guys go from active duty to National Guard? Yes, we do. We get a, I don't know, I would say it's probably, I mean, honestly, like, just looking at my team, if they didn't come from active duty SF, they mm -hmm. came from active duty Ranger Bat or um, some type of active duty unit that transitioned to the Guard. In the SF realm, mm -hmm. that is like you don't see a lot of um, dirty nasty legs. Like I was yeah. coming from National Guard all the way through SF rank. There's only maybe two or three guys I know that that has done that. Everybody else kind of came from active duty and joined the Guard so they could pursue their civilian career, but excel mil militarily um, through the SF world. Okay. So um, if I had to put a number to it. I would say probably 70, 30, to be okay. honest with you. That's still it, a decent mix, though. Yeah, it's, you know? It is. It's more more prior active duty guys on the team than it is, yeah. or prior active duty guys, than there is like a straight uh, uh, guardsman like me okay. that put in amount of years in multiple deployments. Gotcha. Um, and then this uh, follower wants to know, as far as mission and training, being a National Guard, do you feel like you're missing out as compared to your active duty counterparts? Um, I think that's a fallacy, man. Yeah. I think that you, when you get missions is what you make it, because sometimes, mm -hmm. and yeah, that is a thing that, you know, active duty may jump on something that they feel is going to get them some combat experience, yeah. and it turned out to be a bust, and what they, what you got was actually something worthwhile, so I can't really say, like, there's a huge difference in it, but um, that is a fallacy that or well, because you guard, you're not going to get good mission. Yes, active duty sometimes has the preference because this is what they do on a regular. So understanding that um, doesn't mean that you turn your switch off and like, oh, well, I'm just going to get trashed. Yeah. That's not the case. There's you guys some get really, some really good missions too. You get some really yeah. good missions. If you have a squared away company, a squared away team, I mean, the sky's the limit, man. Yeah. Like You could travel. I feel like you could do more as a guardsman than you can as an active duty as mm -hmm. far as picking missions to go on. Yeah. Because let's say... You know, up in New York, let's say 20 group or 1st Battalion has a mission, they're short on personnel. Guess what? 
you could push up there and deploy with them. Yeah. Versus like if you're in third group, you're just in third group. You're not yeah. going to take a seventh group mission. No. Down no. to South America, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, you're kind of like put in that box. Correct. Yeah. I I feel like the guard doesn't put us in the box as far as where we could go, and who we could deploy with. Yeah. Um. And so the sky's the limit when it comes down to that counter drug. We gotta act. We call it AGR, active mm-hmm. guard. Reserves. Yeah. Yeah. And these guys work with uh, uh, law enforcement agencies on a regular. Nice. Doing counter surveillance and stuff yeah. like that. So, still, you know, um, working those muscle groups of, mm-hmm. of our skill set that when we deploy, those guys that come for counter drug kind of help um, train some of the guys on the team. That's amazing, you know? man. Um, let's see what else we got. How is the drilling schedule for guardsmen that completes the uh, Q course? So, um, I can only speak for Florida, and I think a lot of other units are adopting the same um, schedule. We drill quarterly. So instead of drilling like three days a month for 12 months, Mm -hmm. we will drill for seven days or eight days um, because you get a lot more work done. Whether it's knocking out the admin uh, portion the first two days and then utilizing the next six days to do some type of team training. So I think it works out good, especially because we do have... um, people that works for these three letter agencies that they may be overseas. So it allows them to take a break and have that big break because yeah. the they can't make it every drill. So now no. you go to drill, you got a partial team or all you guys not there to train. So it's kind of beneficial having the quarterly thing, which mm-hmm. that's what we do in, at least in Florida. Um, and it works out perfectly. Like you get family time, you knock out your week. It's only a week. It goes by fast. You see yeah. your boys, you have your, your training, you go out and have a drink or two and you're back to your civilian job and you're able to now um, have some consistency with your job um, for a longer period of time before having to leave again every month. It's, it's, it doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's taxing because oh, sure. you have to pack your stuff. And like for me, I live in Miami. Yeah. I have to drive up to Jacksonville. Like that's a five hour drive, yeah. right? So to do that every month will be wear and tear on your vehicle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, and getting off work, you got a full time job, so yeah, you can't take off until that drill date is yeah. set. Unless you just like, yo, I know I got a long drive, I'm gonna take you know, pre game it, take the day off beforehand, so you could pack your stuff and then be fresh to drive um, to your location. Gotcha, so, that makes sense, man. You know. Uh, last question, man, and this one's for me when the hell are you retired, man? Like, you, <laughs> you gotta oh, hang on, man. <laughs> oh man, listen. <laughs> Your wife probably wants to know this too, huh? Yeah, she does. I mean, I I, I don't know, man. You know yeah. how it is. Like, yeah. when you've done something for this long, mm-hmm. it's not easy to put down a stick. Yeah. And um, I I get, I kind of go back and forth. I know for sure I don't want to deploy anymore yeah. because my kids are growing. Yeah. Um, I found a way to start my own company in the interim. Um, to to make passive income, so shall I put the stick down? Like I'm still able to sustain the the life that I've already established. Um, but retirement, like, because <laughs> we never fully retire, right? It's more like shift and focus. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And and what I'm looking at is, and there's two ways I may skin it, or two course of action I may go with. Um, one is um, they want me to become a first sergeant of a company mm-hmm. in 20th Group and um, do a broadening assignment yeah. because... Um, That's how you make E9. <laughs> right, right. But in the Guard, though, honestly, you could be a Master Sergeant and, and if you're at the right time and that Sergeant Major is going, you're up for promotion, yeah. you're going to fill that billet, right? Um, but in the case now, it's like the retention is kind of um, high, so you know, I have to do a broadening assignment yeah. to put myself in a better position to move up on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, for that and so I have to gauge like what benefit am I going to be as an E9 that's really the determining factor whether yeah. or not I'm going to stay in yeah. um, or I'm just doing it for the 30 but I my heart is wanting to push for the 30 but yeah. now starting my own company and things like that mm-hmm. I mean as they say inshallah yeah. um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's yeah. going to be you know two years from now or yeah. like I started Star Major Academy soon in yeah. August so I'm like <laughs> dude I yeah. It looks, it will look good on paper, no yeah. lie. But I'm not doing it for it to look good on paper. I'm yeah. doing it because I want to make sure I'm able to um, add to the regiment or do yeah. something positive. So 
if I don't feel like I'll be able to make a difference um, promoting, then I'll just get out because yeah. I know I have to move out the way for other guys to That's promote cool. to EA yeah. and take teams. I already done two um, team starting deployments almost back to back. And so it's time for me to kind of move on um, with my career yeah. and life. So I don't know, man. We'll see. Stay tuned. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> I know, I know yeah. for sure. Like my wife is like, yo, get your ass out, man. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, man, I, I I definitely appreciate you coming by. And shit, I've known you since 2008, and I feel like I still <laughs> learned a lot just by sitting down with you. Yeah. Um, and again, if you have any additional questions, guys, um, I'll put Larry's contact information in the description down below. Just reach out to him. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, hey, thank you for having me, man. Oh, like, well, anytime, I couldn't man. wait to <laughs> come and sit with you, man. I'm like, yo, you're doing it big, man. So yeah. uh, I appreciate you and what yeah. you're doing for the community, not just yeah. for the community, but for yeah. guys wanting to, like, there's not many guys like you that actually have a passion to want to see people succeed yeah. in this realm and expose them to something that yeah. um, we wasn't exposed, exposed to earlier, yeah. right? So um, I appreciate you, man. If there's any time you want a lending hand or yeah. to be... I guess again, I'll come back again, yeah. maybe after retirement. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> retirement interview. That's uh, awesome, man. Rob, but thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah.